Hi, it's uh, Xavier, and uh, today in the Bonsai Retreat, we're dealing with this. And the only way I can think of dealing with it is to get some expert advice. I've had so many wonderful and helpful comments from the short I did about this Katsura maple, and uh, from people who visited and, and told me what they think. You know, I've got to try and come to a decision, and I know air layer is the, is the, the right decision. And I know I fear that um, if I want this to move on and be more than just a, an okay tree, um, and I want to actually try and enjoy some of the features of this, I have to recognize that I have to, to do something to it. And all the asks for help are, are great, but I still haven't made a decision. And I think I'm going to call in some, uh, some help. And I know someone who's helped me quite a number of times on trees. Can it certainly help me? But I think, um, I think this time I'm going to make a call out to Yelly of Growing Bonsai. Um, we had a laugh while we were doing our uh, Yamadori dig recovery and all the stuff about that. If you haven't seen those two videos, fantastic collaboration. And, uh, and Yelly's certainly got a sense of humour. And I think the link will be up there somewhere. But uh, I'm just going to ask him. So, um, Yelly, are you there? Hey, Xavier. Yeah, I'm here. Why? What's up? This is the beast. In fact, if you have a look on your um, your emails, I've sent you some pictures through as well, about 10, 12 pictures of giving these from all angles. Sure. Let, let, let's go have a look. Interesting question. What to do with your nice maple? Well, nice. Um, in fact, uh, you say nice, I say nice, but I've got a computer here and I'm looking at some of the pictures you sent me and that's an awful nebari. Um, I know putting a rock below the roots may alleviate the problem a little bit. I'm so sorry, it's so busy here on the street right now. I have tried to find a quiet corner, but I just can't. There's no quiet spots. Um, okay, what I said, the nebari, right? You have a rock below the roots, um, but it's not working. Really, it's not working. Just above the nebari, you have quite a substantial scar. Um, so if you want to air layer, the only way to air layer is above that scar. If you go below the scar, it's just basically going to not work. The bark between the scar and the roots is probably partially dead. But there's not going to be a lot of sap flow, so there's not going to be a lot of root formation. Now, overall, the tree uh, splits somewhere halfway up into trunks. And just below the split, there is also a scar. So all in all, there's a lot of scars. And then one of the trucks, trunks has been cut. And the cut is just a blunt cut, it looks like. It's not healed over and there's two side branches going to the side on one way. The other trunk, it goes up a little bit and then there's a very steep bend in the top. That's how I see your tree. It's only a couple of pictures, but basically what you then have, you have a tree, it's a rough tree, and it has some branches to the side. And you have a taller branch with a steep bend in it going over a rock. Now there's a couple of things that you could do. Um, one of the things you could do is bury the whole thing a lot deeper, hoping that the original roots push more higher roots. So you combine that with pruning all the roots that you have now quite substantially, planting the whole thing deep, remove the rock and just let it grow for a year or two. Um, that way you might get new roots forming around the nebari and that could help. Uh, of course you can take some cuttings or young whips of katsura and you graft them on there. So that is a way that you could improve the nabari that you have now. That's not the route that I would go. Now in the video that you shared earlier, um, you also discussed the option, can I just air layer just above the current roots? What I already mentioned, you have this big scar. And this big scar is basically going to prevent you from getting roots on one side of the trunk. So that's also not an optimal way. But one thing that I thought you could do is you could look into getting a twin trunk out of there. So you have this one branch that goes up and then bends down and you have another one that goes up and is chopped off. And basically where they come together, that area is the thickest part of the whole trunk. If you now layer right over the segment where they come together. Um, let's see whether this works. So you have this connection point in your trunk, right? Can you see this? Is this going to show up in the video? And if you then layer right there, 
then you get roots here and there and there and there and this could become a new twin trunk bonsai so that's one of the options right you could air layer that now if you look a little bit further into the tree and you go up in the canopy you have this one branch with a very steep bend in it i could see that as a cascade so there also i think there is a scar let me check yeah that one yeah there is a scar as well uh, so there's the cho the trunk has been chopped and then a little bit more maybe this much of trunk and then there's a steep bend down i think that could be a really really cool little cascade so i would air layer that top out and i would air layer lower down just at the junction of the two trunks you get a small two trunk bonsai and you get a little cascading bonsai Something like that. And this one is of course this one. Where you say I'm going to create something in a nice shallow pot. Um, this already has a branch going like this and another one like that. Here of course you're going to air layer the top. That's that part. But then you can develop the branches on this side more natural. And you let a new whip grow up here. And you create branches there as well. And eventually you even create branches that way. So what you're aiming for is basically an oval pot with your trim trunk in there. Which you're going to let this one grow out wide. You can let that one grow out wide. You're going to let the top run from here. And you develop the branches on this side as well. Just like that. How does that sound? It's a bit of a messy page this now, but I think you get what I mean, right? So you have an air layer at the junction and an air layer here in the top. So all the way in the top you have this scar here, you have this branch going up and bending down steeply with a long branch, a side branch and a side branch and also a top branch which you can use for a nice tree. Now let's find the base, this is the base. And basically, if you would air layer right here, so over this area where the junction forms, then you could make a nice little twin trunk out of there. I don't think you sent me a better one. Yeah, there it is. So you have an air layer here. You have first side branch and a second side branch on this one. You could even let this one extend a little bit and create a secondary canopy completely. This one is also connected to the one with the weird bend, so that's going to be air layered here. But you can just let a new branch grow from here, right? That's what I would do. Wow. Um, you were honest, at least. Um, but you've, you've given me a solution I hadn't even looked at. And, and what you're talking about there is recognizing that all this scarring is basically means there's nothing we can do here. So we've got to go higher up. He's actually looking, and, and going back to the principle I made about before you do an air layer, think about what you're going to achieve and what, what you're going to get from it. There was no point going lower down because what I would have got would have been bitty roots, if any roots at all, very one-sided. So the effort would not be worth the product. But looking higher up, I, I said to him, I actually really, really like this branch and the way it dips down. But I never ever saw a cascade as an opportunity or an option. So. If I take the air layer up here, I'm going to get a, a lovely, and it's, it's quite a nice bend on it as well. And there's, there's a couple of layers there, so I can create exactly like a cascade, and I've got a top. And I never saw that. So first air layer is going to be up here, just above that branch there, and above that scar. And again, he's quite rightly pointed out. Have a look on your trunk, make sure that you're not actually going to pick a place where there may be some impediments. So all I need to decide then is the appropriate angle for where I want the roots to come out. To be fair, I think looking at that, I will just follow the line along. So I will 
or mark the, the lowest most point, which will be literally just above there. And probably it'll be another centimeter there. So we'll be looking at roots coming from up this, this area here and remove that. Now the next part is, can we, if we take the top part, we've still got this bottom half and he did a fantastic diagram. They always look better in the diagrams. But what he's talking about is the next layer We've got a bit of a scar there, so we really need to do, a, do a, a layer across at the thickest point here. Try and avoid here again, scar there, so we know from what Yelly was saying that we won't get roots from there. And as usual, <laughs> the lines never meet. So we've got to go up, and it's something like that. And we'll get the roots coming from there and then we've got all these branches here and see what comes of it now what i'll say is that the top one is the primary one that's the one i'd want to succeed but if we get something from this lower that would be fantastic now the good thing is is that i haven't pruned any of the growth off yet i held back on this one um, because what does uh what does a tree need to produce roots it needs solar panels it needs to get energy from the sun in the early days when I was doing air layers, I had some weird idea that if you cut all the cambium and the bark away, that it wouldn't be able to feed and give nutrients to, to the leaves were there. So I, I used to cut lots of leaves and branches off till there were just a few. And funny enough, they didn't make it. Um, completely wrong thinking. The reality is, is that once we cut that cambium, as you'll know in, in my Bonsai Basics videos about air layering, then we're telling the tree is still getting stuff up through the core or bits and pieces so it's still able to do water flow but basically everything that's coming in there is being dry is driving to root production at the cut site where you've cut the cambium so no pruning so all i'm going to do before i get ready for air layering is get the wire off and then get me bits and pieces together one question yelly and I know people do multiple air layers on trees. I've never done multiple air layers, especially here where we're going to be following the line of the same, same branch. So I've done different air layers on different branches. Is there, is there anything I need to be aware of? I mean, you said I can do it, so I presume I can, and I'm assuming it's down to the health of the tree. But, but is, is multiple air layers off the same branch or trunk really viable? Any, any thoughts on that one? Right, mate, if you want to go and take some air layers, um, yeah, you can. Look, I actually am a little bit annoyed with your question because I have actually a video in the making about taking multiple air layers from a tree. So, yeah, you can. Um, this one is taking an air layer here at the bottom of the trunk, a side branch, a side branch, and another side branch. There's actually four air layers on this tree. And the thing to look out for is that you have for every segment where you want to have roots, leaves without a disconnect. All the leaves here on this branch make roots here this one is fed by the upper tree and in fact there's two branches here and only one of them is being layered the other is feeding the roots this way you keep the layer healthy but if you take them too low then there's no leaves between the roots and the first layer and that is the point where you can actually lose the bottom of your tree so the roots can die out because there's too much energy being taken away fair enough yelly um i think it'll be fine we'll, we'll go um Definitely it's a healthy tree, uh, it's just scarred. Now, um, before we do that, I have to take a leaf out of Adam of Notion Bonsai's uh, videos in his um, preparation, always make sure you know what tools you're using. So for air layering, tin foil. That's what you used to cover the air layer with at the end. It also means you can peel it away easily and have a look and see if there's roots growing. Huge plastic, whether it be clear or black or whatever, where you actually wrap the sphagnum moss in. So you need sphagnum moss. Nice wet that's been uh, soaking overnight for at least, well, at least 20 seconds. Uh, so it's nice and moist. And pliers, um, not for jitting, but for tightening your wire, for when you might want to put a, um, a tourniquet on it, which I'll show you how to do. Your brush, because finally I'm going to take the advice and not get this rooting gel hormone all over my fingers and promote DNA changing and alteration so that I become the next Spider-Man. 
a very, very sharp knife or paring knife or um, grafting knife where you can actually cut away the cambium so that you can get a good air layer. I always have a sanding block to keep that sharp. Pen to mark where you're going to actually take the air layer and take your time with this because as you saw earlier, it's funny how when you start a line on a circumference, it never seems to meet no matter how much you think it should. Um, and then probably, I know some of you have been looking, what is that at the back? I mean, let's be real, these things are dangerous, especially in my hands. In fact, that's caused me quite a lot of problems in the past. So, for all those bleeders, always need to have yourself your waterproof plasters, because obviously once you cut yourself, you are going to still have to keep going ahead and dealing with the damp moss to finish your air layer. Obviously, that hurts. So for your low-level cut, paracetamol, I always use 500. If by the second or third injury, you're still trying to get out there and finish that air layer. You can't beat a bit of coating. Seriously, that's a joke. If you happen to remove a limb, you always need to have your emergency St. John ambulance first aid. If it's an arm, you obviously need to have someone to help you so they can turn the pages. And a sling, because once that, uh, that thing has been amputated, you need to keep your arm up so that the loss of blood doesn't cause any issues. So you can still continue air layer. Oh, don't get blood on the air layer because I don't think it'll work with the sphagnum moss. And then of course, if that doesn't work and you're stuck down at A&E, that's a long waiting time. Bag of salt and vinegar crisps, gotta have it. So that for me is my complete air layer kit. Salt and vinegar chips, really? Must be a British invention. I prefer tortilla chips. Seriously, we don't take any tablets or anything like that while we're working with sharp items. Okay, so I've got all the wire off. Mark the lines that I want to do the layer on. You've seen me do a layer. I'll, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll strip that area clear first with a knife. It's always awkward trying to, it's gonna be all right to get into that area, but getting in there might be more awkward because there's some branches here. So I need to make sure that I score above this is going to be a sharp knife. And not to break any of the branches that I want. Now the bottom line isn't as half as important as the top one. Now what I need to do is try and get this line in. And this is the important one. Don't try this at home. Okay, as usual, no matter how much, how hard you try, what we do is slice down. See, hopefully we'll be able to lift that. And that, hopefully, should all lift away in one uh, nice easy piece. Never quite works out like that. Hopefully. Ta da! And that's all done. What I will do now is just make sure that this, this part of the cut is nice and uh, clean because that's where you want your action to take place and that needs to be clean. And I'm just going to double check and make sure that all the cambium is off by scraping round. And I just scrape down so that what we're trying to do is absolutely. Oh, mate, turn the tree. We can't see what you're doing. Stop or reduce any chance of there being any bridging between the top and the bottom, which will therefore allow, or shall actually basically stop the LAF from succeeding. Oh, we can definitely say there's no turning back now. Okay. That's all nicely cleaned up. Cut a little notch. I can make my cup for the sphagnum. 
Now equally, you could also use one of these and actually put a plant pot with a hole in there and put that around there, which would equally work well. It's just, I like to use the plastic. Now if you look here, you can see, I basically just use pots predominantly. I hardly ever use plastic and sphagnum moss for me stays too wet. So I just use normal substrate. The downside is I water these pots every single time I water the rest of the tree. So yeah, that is a choice. Um, I, I really don't use the plastic wrapping anymore. It's too cumbersome. Only in places where I can't put a pot, I will use the plastic. Ain't some nice rooting hormone up there. Oh, I forgot one thing. Just I like to put a tourniquet on it, a wire tourniquet. nice and tight what you don't want is this air layer slipping around in any way shape or form and what we do is make sure that all the moss is firmly firmly in place so that we can promote root growth and if you can make it look neat well that's a bonus So you've got a good layer of moss. I've probably got about a centimetre of moss on the back, probably a centimetre and a half on the front. And what makes this easier is I've got this branch here that produces a, that provides an excellent anchor point. Two schools of thought. Um, it's actually really quite neat. But you can leave this open as a cup and then naturally moisture will come through. Or you can tie it off and seal it, which is what I will do. Then you want to make sure you get the top edges in. Right, so we've got the baggie on. Probably one of my one of my neat stair layers, I have to say. There's no reason why that shouldn't work. Um, all I will do is put a little a few holes at the bottom. So uh, that allows water to drain. Hey, that's a really good tip. I'm going to remember that one. Maybe that will help to keep the roots better if I put use a plastic bag. I'm going to try that. It's always a bit fiddly, but take your time. Make sure you get lots of moss around it and make sure it's pretty secure in place. The final thing I do is apply some tin foil. Keeps it dark, but it's also good for uh, stopping it uh, becoming boil in the bag roots. Okay. And that little bit of uh, wire there is just lightly on, but I have found that once things start to dry out a little bit, the foil will pull away. And I didn't cut enough, so there you go. Anyway, that's the top LA done. I am really hoping and quietly confident that with the LA results I've had before, that that should be quite successful. Well, what can I say? You seem to know what you're doing with this air layering savior. That should be no problem whatsoever. Um, I do apologize about my neighbors. It's a little bit loud today. Um, yeah, I couldn't find it quite. Hey, in the next four to six weeks, you might have roots on that, except for you're in the UK. Take two to six years. I'm going to go and do exactly the same thing here. As I say, try and get it as close to that double trunk line as I can. Um, and then come back to you. Okay, so it's a little bit more difficult this one because of the amount of um, dead bits on the trunk. But I've gone right around, I've actually gone quite a lot there. There's the signs of the dead scarring there. Um, under there, dead scarring. You really need to make sure there's no chance of any bridging taking place. There and there. So there's quite a few knot holes there, but I've got a nice clean edge up the top there, and hopefully we'll get roots from out here and start developing a twin trunk as. Yelly suggested. So I'm going to use the same principle. Put on a big, um, a big air layer bag there, and uh, yeah, see what happens. 
Right, well, as they say, there's no going back now. Second ALA is in place using exactly the same method. Hopefully, in another sort of uh, two, two and a half months, we'll definitely be seeing signs of roots where we are June, July, um, all things being equal. I'll be looking for uh, uh, equitable separation without lawyers sometime around uh, early September. Um, and the reason why you pick early September is then we'll be looking at um, the optimum time for greater root growth before we actually hit the winter. So we want to give it, you know, at least a good six to eight weeks um, in um, good soil to, uh, to establish a new root structure. And no, for anyone who's wondering, I will not be going for the overwintering in sphagnum moss style. I haven't got the setup to do it. My greenhouse is just too cold, no air, no ventilation. Um, and this, I want this project to really work because I think if it does, it's going to be magnificent. So I will put this into a, a shady part of the garden anyway. I'll keep an eye on it. So every couple of weeks, I'll probably take the tinfoil off and just have a little peek to see if there's any root production. But the balls are nice and damp. And this time I'm definitely going to stick to my, um, my views about do not put too much water in there. If it needs to be, I can always use a syringe. But I am extremely uh, confident that I'm not going to be able to, I'm not going to need to add moisture there for at least four weeks. Depending on what the weather's like, obviously. Um, rain will naturally pour down anyway, so there'll be a small amount there, but we do not want to risk anything when it comes to root production for this Katsura. And hopefully, we're going to get one very, very nice Cascade Katsura that's already well on the way. Um, and that only needs to be developing roots. And bonus tree number two, well, who knows what it will look like as a twin trunk, but uh, certainly overall the whole lot's going to look better than before. Um, Yelly, anything you need to add or say before uh, we put this to bed for a couple of months? Overall, I think this looks really, really good, and I think you should have no problem rooting this in the next four to six weeks. So in five, six weeks, start checking that substrate, make sure it doesn't dry out fertilize a little bit in between them. Yeah, I think that should work. That's nicely done, Xavier. I'd like to thank Yelly for his uh, advice, which I've taken, but also recognize that there was similar advice in the comments in numerous videos about taking air layers um, at different points on this tree. Um, so everyone was on the right track with this. <clears throat> really confident that if the tree's healthy, those air layers should take. And uh, we'll be able to say goodbye to that horrible, horrible root structure. So from Xavier, in my bonsai retreat, feeling very happy with what he's achieved today. I'll say, I've got, I've got itch in my throat. <coughs> <coughs> so from Xavier, in the bonsai retreat, about to go in for lunch, I'll say thanks very much for watching. Enjoyed the content, please, please, subscribe, hit bell notifications, I'm trying to beat, I've got, you know, you've got, <coughs> ah. hit bell notifications, and I desperately need to get some water, all the best, happy bonsai, God bless, cheers, and there's a tear running just down there, oh dear, fantastic.